spend more time thinking. This one goes out to all of the Google Chrome and Firefox warriors out there who got like 49 tabs open right now. You know who you are. The old, oh, that Twitter thread had something interesting in it. Let me open that in a new tab and leave that there until I how some way find more time to get to it eventually. When the truth is it's probably a shiny object, a distraction, an opportunity cost, and an expense that will keep you from doing what's most important in your business. All sold under the guise of being helpful in accomplishing your goals, but it's not really your goals, it's what their copywriter kind of sort of made you think was your goal through the sales copy. Multiply by 42 or 49, however many tabs you got open. Obviously, your brain has limited processing power. But here's the other side of that coin. Your brain has immense power when it's focused, right? You get that subconscious mind, your conscious mind, your fucking internal talk, right? Your ego mind, your self-talk, all going in one direction, building one thing, fired up, life feels good, flow state happens. Brain waves kind of sort of slow down. They sink in with your heart. You get that coherence. You can feel it. It's a vibe. Most people are scattered, chaotic, kind of stressed out, trying not to panic, feeling behind the curve, and it resembles the doggy paddle after someone falls in the boat when they could just kind of stand up and, you know, be fine, but instead they're flailing about in the water, taking all this action, spending all this energy to try to keep their head above water, doing all kinds of shit that's not really actually helping. If this stings, that's not my intention, and we will make it better. But it is how a lot of people are treating this game. Now, on YouTube, I just put up a new video, the $50 million lead magnet revealed. And it requires video because I'm showing you the lead magnet. So it's not one that translates over here to the old podcast. And this video came from me sitting my lazy ass on my back deck, petting my cat, enjoying the heat wave. Also known as spending more time thinking. Got a bit of a new morning ritual here on the homestead. My neighbor runs some big machinery, so we built this fire pit, kind of up a little hill above the garage, so I would say 48 steps from my front door, cross the driveway, go up this really cool staircase that he built, all stone staircase, a bunch of like big ass boulders, and then there's this kind of gravel flat fire pit up there with a bunch of big granite rocks. I I posted some pictures on my Instagram a while back. So I go up there with my coffee and I just sit. I listen to audiobooks. Right now I'm listening to, I'll tell you what that is. Do I have my phone nearby? Ah, I don't have my phone nearby. I did that on purpose to keep myself focused. And here it is. I'll tweet the book. It's like the magic of belief or the power of belief. I believe it is. It's from like the 1920s. It's one of those old books. So I'm just out there like, you know, making sure really empowering ideas are flowing into my world through what I listen to, right? What I'm consuming is pointing my brain and my being in a positive direction. Zig Ziglar's See You at the Top audio seminar on Audible is another great version of that. Jim Rohn has an audio on Audible called the day that your life turns around. It's great for that. These are all ones I listen to. I listen to this stuff all the time. I'm a total personal development geek. And I listen to a lot of the old stuff from the 1920s, what's called the New Thought Movement, in and around Napoleon Hill's time, Wallace Waddles, that kind of like vintage, if you will. Because they're talking about the same stuff that the modern New Age people are talking about from a very scientific way, and it's all in the 1920s floofy language, and I just enjoy it. But most importantly, it fills my brain with positive stuff, with empowering ideas, with empowering stories of great people who rose from humble beginnings and created great things and did wonderful impact in the world. So I'm not really working much. My intention is to be thinking or listening to stuff or in my garden. I think my garden has been incredible. We've pulled 40 kilos of food or something nuts, like 50, 100 pounds of food already out of the garden with more coming. Not that much. I had 24 pounds of strawberries alone. <laughs> Spend more time thinking. For years, it was just hiking for me, right? I've got a little Sedona connection. There's a few hundred miles of hiking trails out there. That's my thinking time. 
It's also something healthy. Listening to positive audio stuff, right? Listening to the great audio pieces from yesteryear, not the floofy crap that's turned out by publishing companies today written by ghostwriters. Good Lord. No, the stuff's, that's shtick designed to make a buck and to promote a personal brand. That's all that stuff is. They, they operated from a different place of being in the 1960s and the 1940s. Like people did things for different reasons, right? It wasn't all a weird dopamine fueled vanity metric chase like it is today. So I think they're clear. They're more concise. This is, so I'm, I'm listening to these ideas of these greats. I'm looking over some old lead magnets, like my newest video on YouTube, the $50 million lead magnet, right? I bought this stuff and I got it in my hands and I'm going through it. Spoiler alert. It's a physical thing. It's going to blow your mind when you see it. It really is a paradigm shifter. When you understand this stuff, it comes from the old school spoiler alert. Still get a ton of value from that video. I look at what worked incredibly well, $50 million, right? You got fancy guru boy trying to tell you that you got to sell $5,000 a month coaching bullshit. I hate that stuff here. You know, you don't know how to coach people. Cool. Get a coaching client and start selling $3,000 a month coaching. Good Lord. Directions are society going. If everyone starts doing that, you have the blind leading the blind is the side effect of that. Whereas you have these other people who were, who were great people. <laughs> they came from a different place. They weren't chasing vanity metrics. They somehow, somehow avoided all of the weird social stuff that's arisen through all of the algorithms that we all engage with all day, every day, and have for 20 years now, right? And they created these things that made 50 million bucks in their day. That's a lot of money today when you account for like what the folks in D.C. are doing with our currency debasement. It's an incredible amount of money. And they did it selling, you know, cheap stuff. Like, so I, I look at that stuff. I fill my brain with positive, empowering, uplifting stuff through audio seminars and old ass books. And then I'm out in my garden or I'm sitting up there with my cat and I got notepads, you know, your phone's got a notepad on and I, I always have a notepad nearby. I've got notepads in all over my house, kind of a mad scientist look to my office with just notepads everywhere. It's a mess. And I just write down ideas as I got, get my ideas more time thinking. Okay. So now we're writing down ideas. I'm going to move forward. And there is like a process here that we're kind of going through. Now I've been writing down ideas and I'll often write and rewrite and rewrite ideas. My most recent automated income training where I show how in 48 hours I built a full automated income system and it drove like a hundred leads and it made commissions in the first 48 hours. Right. So, so that big idea that ultimately was like an outline at one point in time, I rewrote that outline like seven times. No, no, this one's got to go before that. Cool. Okay. Add a couple steps here and I can get rid of that. Constantly, how do I make this more succinct, more succinct, more succinct? And then when that idea was refined down through thinking, right? Pen, paper, sitting on a rock. When that idea was like super refined, when I could like smell it, then I went to my computer. Do you get the point? Because most people aren't leaving their computer. And instead, their like quick break is to go open up Twitter and there's a thread because thread hacking is like the only way people are getting growth on Twitter so they can sell their shit you don't need. And then they're opening up all the stuff on Twitter that they don't need. That's opportunity cost, leaving it open in a tab. Now they've spun this up in their brain. It's something your brain has to hold in this weird like RAM, right? random access memory stuff. It's an open loop in your brain until it's closed and you're doing nothing fucking pro productive. Maybe you are. I don't know. I'm not trying to be a dick. I do apologize. And I've said some swear words. God. All right. I care about you. And I really want you to take the right actions. And like the whole environment of learning this stuff is toxic, right? The whole like, once you go down this rabbit hole, of internet marketing and building your business online, you start to see all these other people do it and everybody's selling something. Everybody got ulterior motives here and there and they're all distracting you from your core and then you're bouncing around from their core and shiny object syndrome takes over and this is how people get themselves into these kind of states of overwhelm, burnout, analysis paralysis, right? And it's, it's again, so all these tabs are open in their brain. They're not clear, they're not focused. They're not taking time to go sit out on their patio or sit somewhere, go sit at a fucking coffee shop. I don't know, go sit, actually, no, I do know. Go sit in nature, right? Like try to find some like where you aren't just constantly surrounded by Wi-Fi and devices and people and honking. Like go sit under a tree with a notepad and at the top of that notepad, write on it and write these words, WTF am I doing? Question mark. And then just start writing ideas below it. And once that page is full, flip it over. Cool. If you got something better than what am I actually doing? 
cool, but you can write, what am I doing? And it's like, man, okay, I'm building a business. Well, I'm also a father. I'm also a mother. I'm also a, a professional. I'm also a this. Cool. Like, how am I going to balance all this stuff? Like, write these things out. Get it out of your head. What's my strategy? Am I going to build organic traffic on Google? Okay, cool. So I need to learn keyword research. What's, what do I actually need to learn keyword research? Cool. I got Miles' two videos I need to watch in a tool. Perfect. Done. Right? What's the next thing that I need? Write it down. And write down all the other stuff too. Right? Don't try to write the good stuff. This is why I attempted to illustrate how like many messy full notebooks there are laying on the floor they're on like notepads and notepaper everywhere right it's mad scientist style with me with ideas and stuff until i write down one one page one idea because all great ideas and multi-million dollar businesses can fit on one page if you can't fit on one page if you can't write it all out top to bottom inside out here's what i'm gonna sell here's how i'm gonna sell it here's where my traffic is coming from here's the follow-up sequence basic if you can't get that all on one page you are not clear enough and if you're taking action before you're clear enough what are you doing? You're, you're going to drive yourself mad. Stephen Pressfield, who writes The War of Art, which is a wonderful book if you're a creator, as is Turning Pro. Stephen Pressfield's stuff is, his nonfiction stuff is fantastic. He's a novelist who struggled for like 27 years writing novels. And then he had one that blew up the legend of Bagger Vance, it got turned into a movie. Bingo, he made it after like 27 years of just writing screenplay after screenplay and book after book that just literally went in the fucking trash. And that's what most people aren't doing right now. Like the unsuccessful people, I call them the entrepreneurs, and I, I use that term lovingly, right? They're not, they're not writing enough books that are complete but throwaway worthy to get to the one that's a hit because they're looking around on Twitter and YouTube trying to find the secret to writing the hit when the secret is to not spend time on Twitter and YouTube and to write dud after 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 dud and then you might get a hit but you might have to write another dud after dud after dud after a dud after dud after a dud well how many is it going to take miles i don't know how good are you have you mastered the craft 265 sales pages i've done at least 300 sales pages that i've written I've launched at least 300 products with my wife, single MP3s, two MP3, like double MP3s, a 30 day series of MP3s, a seven MP3 pack. I'm slicing it and dicing it like the Ginsu knife. I'm making Julian fries over here. I'm mixing and remixing things. New offer, write a new sales letter for that. Perfect. Short sales letters, long sales letters, video sales letters, text sales letters. Perfect. Cool. Along that path, some made a couple hundred bucks. Some barely made a hundred bucks. Some made a thousand bucks. Oh, shit, that one made a thousand. Hold up. I ain't been making nothing but dozens and hundreds of dollars. And all of a sudden, I just made a thousand. Hmm. So then what do I do? I go think. What did I do different on that one? Well, it was a big idea. It was different. Oh, it was about this. It was about that. It was focused on this. I said this this way. The headline. Oh, the headline's pretty good. Maybe I could model that headline for this other thing that I tested that flopped. Maybe that. Okay. Think. Till one idea gets clear enough and it's written down on my piece of paper. And I'm like, that, that actually might work. And all, here's the thing, like all my duds that I've been like creating and throwing out there, like I've learned from all of them and the cumulative total of how much I've made from all those duds is noteworthy. It's just not the big fancy seven figure launch type thing. I don't know. It's just not how I do things. It's, I don't know. I don't chase them. I don't care. Andre Chaperone had a wonderful blog post a few years ago about his buddy who did a seven-figure launch and a million-dollar launch and bragging about his launch. Net, net, end of the day, dude made 40 Gs. That means he paid out $960,000 of 100 in taxes and ad spend and support and affiliate payouts, all of it. Yeah, I'm over here just selling cheap stuff that sells itself pretty effectively because I've done it over and over and over and tested it, tested it. Like think of it this way. I've been going to the flea market every weekend for about mm, 12 years trying to sell my little things. Sell, sell, that's sell. How do I sell it this way? How do I sell that way? How do I sell this way? I've had millions of interact interactions with potential clients. Why? Because I'm at the flea market all the time. Why was I at the flea market all the time? And I'm being metaphorical, if you will, with this flea market idea, right? My flea market is write sales letter, go publish email to my list. Write sales letter, go publish post to my social where I have an audience. Write sales letter, go run ad. Create 
opt-in page with OTO behind. OTO is a one-time offer, so it's a sales letter, right? So create an opt-in page. So, so try to sell the thing is A, that's one way. Now nah, that didn't work too well. Okay, well, what if I put a free checklist in front of it and I make them opt in for the checklist and then I try to sell the thing on the next page? No, that didn't well work well. Maybe I put a free video and instead I gave away a free video training and the video training, I did a verbal plug at the end and I tried to sell the thing from the video and then the sales letter pops up. Maybe that would work. Well, I don't know. Okay, I got to build it. These, these are the good ideas that, that when they hit my paper, I go create them. Why? Because if one of those things work, I could create an automated income stream that could create thousands of dollars a week. I don't know, a thousand bucks a day. Like it's all doable, right? As revealed in my newest YouTube video, the $50 million lead magnet, you can make up to 50 mil with some of these kinds of things. And it's very simple. When you see it, you're going to be like, holy shit, they made 50 mil of that. Like, God damn. Yeah. So and if I'm not doing that, and this is, so this is where the podcast comes in because I've got all fired up on my podcast and I've been fired up on YouTube to build brand. That all was and is chasing brain chemistry. The need to feel significant. Vanity metrics. To be able to flex on Twitter. I've got 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. Ha ha ha. Look how significant I am. In one sense, it's the modern day MBA or bachelor degree. All it really shows is that I've shoveled a pile of manure. A, a large pile of manure, right? I just showed up and I did the work and I did 684 videos or whatever the heck it is. And that resulted in 200,000 subscribers. And I just did it so fast, so aggressively that I kind of got into a pretty good growth curve, right? Same thing we did with my wife's business on her blogs. Because before we even had an idea of what we could sell, we had no idea what to sell. So our best idea, the idea that we wrote down on the paper that, that was worthy of acting on was we can build an audience of people who love this same stuff we love. My wife was offering readings, one-on-one -on -one angel readings in the very beginning, right? They were literally, it was a PayPal button. And what we did is we started on Twitter. We did aggressive Twitter marketing and aggressive blogging because the best idea we had was if we do a thousand posts, each one focused at a keyword phrase, each one getting SEO optimized, and then each one getting perpetually, repeatedly promoted by Twitter, because there was a time when you got backlink juice from Twitter and people were actually on Twitter. That, that was it. It was like, yeah, that'll grow an audience. And once we have an audience, we do. And then, then at one point on that path, it was like, oh shit, we got to build an email list, right? Being, okay, well, that's worthy. So now that's the thing we're working on. I write it out on a piece of paper and I go do it. And then it's done. I, okay. I don't go to Twitter. Like, so when this audio is done, I'm going to render it. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to get it away from this and be done with this project as fast as humanly possible and put it in place. And it'll be minimal description, minimal announcing, nothing. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's out there for those of you who you see the notification. That's what I'm talking to right now. That's if you, you take action and build your business. Hey, law of attraction takes over from there. If I help you make a million dollars, if I am a useful person on your path that vibrationally karma works in my favor, call it what you want. I don't care. Law of reaping and sowing law of attraction, karma. It's wired into the ether of our universe. So I just kind of keep showing up when I have a really, 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 really good idea. And I thought this was a good idea because I think too many people aren't thinking enough. And I think that a 30 minute think tank, think tank, 30 minutes in nature, I think would help you greatly. Could be a walk in nature. I think that would help as well. Exercise is important. What's the point of making a bunch of money if you ain't fit to enjoy it later in life? Some people trade off health and they try to burn themselves. Ah, I can't do that. It's a risky path. Thought about that one. Seems like a risky path to me. So hike for me, gardening, right? I move, we have this thing called a gorilla cart. It's a beast. So I'm just moving almost like a half cubic yard, maybe, maybe a cubic yard of, no, three cubic feet of topsoil or I don't know, about 150 pounds worth of stuff. Shovel it up, move it over here, dump it, move it around. Just constantly lifting hundreds of pounds in dozens of pounds increments through a shovel, right? Like shovel work. I'm like literally it's getting ripped over here. It's awesome, right? So that's my, so I'm out in the garden. I'm enjoying being in nature. I'm growing really nutrient dense food for myself, which is healthy. I'm lifting heavy things and, you know, all the stuff that the CrossFitters talk, I'm doing all those things and I'm thinking, and, and all of a sudden out there, an idea hits me like this right here. Now enough people are thinking, oh shit, huh? And I just catch this thread of an idea. I'm like, huh, I could probably do a little podcast about that. All right. And I take up and I start walking in. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm like, literally at this point, I'm headed towards the microphone. Basic intro idea. Cool. What am I doing? Oh, I, I could probably actually even promote my new YouTube video. Ah, that'd be kind of helpful. It's got two, two layers of victory on it. Yep. Let's do it. Bingo. Fire it up. Cut it. 
shoot from the hip. Here we are, 23 minutes, 36 seconds later, just kind of chatting, having a good time together on the podcast feed. Now, if I had a $2,000 course to sell, like the other gurus who have podcasts, like I would be very intent on having this podcast constantly repeating my opt-in because my life and my business would be reliant on me selling you on stuff, which sucks. It's just a little greasy. And a lot of those greasy people are cool with being greasy and they brag about how much money they make from their greasiness. And I just think it's kind of greasy. So I'll be in the garden until I have another damn good idea for you. And then I'll share it. And I really hope you take this to heart. Right. I hope you take this little pep talk to heart and I hope you understand that taking time to breathe, taking time to just sit, closing all them tabs in your brain, close all them damn tabs in your computer. If it was important, you would have done it. And if it is important, you'll remember and you'll get back to it. But right now it's a fucking distraction and you got to close it all. You got to get zero focus like a laser on one thing. And we'll end it with the magnifying glass analogy if you haven't heard it. Okay, let's say you wanted to start a little fire and you have a magnifying glass in one hand, the sun's over your shoulder, you got a little pile of tinder. You're in a very safe setting. Let's put the set this up right. You know, you're in a nice brio smokeless fire pit. So you just decide you're going to start this one controlled, contained, beautiful fire to warm your family at the camp. And you're going to do it with a magnifying glass. Recommend a ferro rod, but hey, let's run with it. So you've got this magnifying glass and you have the light pointed right to that point where you're starting to get the smoke coming, but you move the magnifying glass. And now you're going to make this part of the paper over here smoke a little bit, and then you move the magnifying glass. And then you're taking this intense focus of the sun, of the solar energy. You're taking this intense focus, and you're moving it all over the fucking place. <laughs> ah, it's so stressful. It's, it's like that's the problem when all you got to do is just breathe, be patient, Hold that position. Go sit under a tree and just be there for a minute. Let all those thoughts run. Hold that intensity of focus. Find that one thing that's worthy of the intensity of your focus. And then go do that. Spend more time with your kids. Spend more time hiking. Spend more time in nature. Spend more time working out. Spend more time finding nutrient-dense, healthy foods. Spend more time cooking great foods with people you like. Spend more time laughing with friends. Have a notepad around. Always be thinking about what's going on. And when you get those inspired ideas, the ones that you're like, fuck, that's really good, write it out. Get really clear on that thing. Get some notepads around. Notepads are cheap. Write it all out. Then when it's written out, you're like, man, here's the main point. The intro would talk about this. Here's the sub points from there. Being, okay, cool. Then go write your post. And this, this can be applied to writing blog posts. This can be applied to lead magnets, to entire YouTube channels, to whatever it is. Email marketing. I go up to the fire pit, sit there with my coffee. The cat comes running up, begging me to feed him. I'm like, eh, not yet, cat. You're looking a little chunky. <laughs> so I sit there. I say thank you. I look at the lake. I look at the mountains, the trees. I'm in the forest. It's a beautiful setting. I just sit there and just bask in it with a cup of coffee. I, I make delicious coffee. I just have a really enjoyable moment. And I just kind of like chill. And I'm like, all right, I need to email my list today. It's one of those important things. It's on my list of things I'm just going to always do because it's, it's that damn profitable. I'm going to email today. What am I email? What could help my people? All right. And I write down, what could I send on the top of the paper, on the top of the piece of paper, I write down, what can I email my list today that would help them? And I just start spitballing ideas with myself. I could write about this. I could write about that. I could promote my $50 million lead magnet that's on YouTube. I could, I could promote this podcast tomorrow. you damn right. That's going to happen. Right. So, so, and a lot of these things are already on my head. I already know what I'm gonna do. Like today, I just said it right there. I just had the aha moment right there on the mic here with you that tomorrow I'm going to email this podcast. Bingo. Done. So now I'm done. Like I get to go do that. And so when I say I'm done, I'm done at the computer. It's from this point today. I'm still thinking about what's my next YouTube video. That's actually worthy of me making that, that could have some impact. Right. I'm actually, I'm thinking about what's my next lead magnet. Cause the last lead magnet, it's not really working as good as the one before. And I thought for sure, I thought for sure this one was going to be the one y'all. Damn. I thought for sure. Yeah. Nope. Just another dud. Perfect. Launch a lot of duds. Y'all. I launch a lot of duds and every dud I launch, I think it's going to work. That's the annoying part. It's like, Ooh, this is a really good idea. And I write it out and I write it out and I refine it and I write it out and I out outline it and re outline it and refine it. And I put it together and I launch it and eh, that's all right, is what the market says. Well, okay. Back to my garden. Go wash my fucking van, right? Like 
clean clean out the camper, get ready for the next trip, kind of just do all the little piddly things. We're in firewood splitting season at this point, pretty much. And it's like, oh, I could do it this way. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so if I did that instead of that, and I flipped that around over there, and I did a checklist, and I actually sold the video, because like my last lead magnet, I sold the video. The video is really good. And I'm almost wondering if I should be selling the video, right? So it's an opt-in for the video now. And I'm like, damn, so maybe I could do like a checklist, and then I could sell the video for seven bucks. Maybe that would be something I could scale. Maybe I need to sell for 17 bucks. Maybe that could scale. I don't know. Huh? Ah, checklist. See that? And then I'm like, okay, so that's a rough idea. And I'm like, okay, well, the checklist in front of the video, like, the vi how would, that doesn't make any sense. Like, how would I put a checklist in front of the video? Bingo, that's a new challenge. Cool. So that's what I'm going to be chewing on out in the garden. And so I got kind of like a next email. Okay, what's my next video? What's my next piece of content? Okay. What's the next thing I'm like promoting, whether it's a for sale or for an opt-in, right? What's the next thing I'm trying to get to work with ads? You know, that's it. That, that's all I have to work on. That's all I have to do. That next piece of content. And that's the only one I need to be working on. I don't work on five pieces of content at once. What the fuck? You can only do one thing at once. The magnifying glass. If you want to create ignition and combustion, if you want to release a higher order of energy from yourself, right? The sun, you are the proverbial sun here. You must focus your energy intensely. And I like to focus it on a piece of paper. It's flammable for the analogy, right? Focus that thing in. Once you get super focused, go and bang that thing out, get it done, ship that work next, right? Get it done. I'm at 30 minutes in, and I will wrap this up right now. I literally had this idea 33 minutes ago. It took me three minutes to go from idea to cutting this. 30 minutes, I will be done in less than an hour. And this little piece goes out, and hopefully it helps you. Hopefully you go check out my newest YouTube video, The $50 Million Lead Magnet Revealed. It will blow your mind. If you do, go leave me a comment in the podcast and just be like, yo, I'm here from the pod in the comments, because that would mean you listen to the whole podcast, which if you do, I would like to say thank you. And I would know because you would comment on the YouTube video. And then I could say thank you for listening to the pod because this was a long one. I kind of rambled. I dropped some swear words. So thank you for being patient with me. I appreciate you. And I'll catch you on the next one. Till then, be well.